probably should have looked some of this up before I started talking. <laughs> episode 54 of the Elo Stitch podcast. I'm your host Kristen and I'm here to talk to you about what else? Knitting. I will also be talking about all things knitting related and yarn related and maybe not so knitting and yarn related. So if you don't know me already, my name is Kristen Janik. I'm a semi-retired knitting pattern designer, a knitting instructor, and an all-around knitting enthusiast. I am podcasting to you from my home in the Maryland suburbs of Washington, D.C. And when I am not knitting, you can find me vegetable gardening, watching baseball, drinking wine, sewing, but it is mostly about the knitting. So let's go ahead and start talking about it. Let's start right off with talking about some on and off the needles. I don't have anything off the needles. Um, to be fair though, I did have a whole sweater in the last episode, uh, but I have made some good progress on one of my projects. And that is that I have finished the body of my snowy forest pullover. Uh, this is the first big project that I cast on for my Make 9 2022. This is a pattern by Midori Heroes. Heroes? I'm not sure. Um, and I am so pleased with the way it is looking so far and excited to... Um, get on over to Sleeve Island. So this, as you can see, is a top-down circular yoke pullover. Um, the cables are not particularly complex in the sense that they're not like, you know, interwoven and moving all over the place, but in order to increase for the yoke, you are working increases in your cables. So as you can see, uh, they start off relatively small and progressively get larger, as do the little twists. Um, but you are only really working, I want to say, four of these big cable crosses. Uh, and there's a lot of rows in the middle. I don't want to say plain because you're still working these little left twist and right twists, but those are pretty simple. Um, so I finished up the yoke um, shortly after my last episode. And then from there, the body is actually just, it's a very deep yoke. So the body is really just a few inches. What is that? Maybe five inches and then about three and a half inches for the hem. Um, so there's a cropped version and a regular version of this. And so I picked for the length, something that's kind of right in between. I don't wear a lot of high-waisted pants. Um, I just uh, don't find them comfortable or particularly flattering. However, I do have a rather short waist. So while a cropped sweater with high-waisted pants would probably be fine, since I don't wear high-waisted pants, it, it leaves me with, you know, like an an inch or two of exposed midriff. Um, so I knit this sort of in between and this is going to hit right at the waistband of most of my pants. Um, loving this so far. I am knitting this in the Hat Merino Sport and uh, Surrey Silky from Fiber for the People in her Endor colorway. Um, and I believe I have enough left for the sleeves. Um, so the body used almost a two, two full skeins of the Surrey Silky and pretty close to the two full skeins of the Hemp Merino Sport. So I'm fingers crossed we'll have enough left for the sleeves. Like I said, it is a really deep yoke. So if I can stand up a little bit here. You can see the yoke really comes down like to here. Um, so the sleeves won't be as long. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. Very excited to have this. Um, the sleeves are, I believe, are just knit straight and then decreased right before the cuff. So there's not a lot of decreasing to keep to keep an eye on. So it should be pretty mindless knitting. And the body of this sweater is knit on US 10. So that should go pretty quickly as well. And of course, they're knitting around. So 
I am so excited to have this. I really think today is February 16th. I really think I can have this done and wearable by the end of the month. So fingers crossed. So that has been getting most of my attention um, in terms of my whips. I also seem to have come down with a bit of startitis. I really want to start a lot of different projects um, and I've been swatching for a lot of different projects, but I'm actually kind of a little bit overwhelmed because I can't decide what I want to do next. Um, so we'll get into that a little bit. I will show you a tiny bit of progress on um, my Carbayal, which is this basic one by one ribbed hat um, with a folded over brim. It is knit at a rather tight gauge. It's two strands of fingering weight yarn held together, um, which should make a DK weight ish. Uh, but it is knit on a size US 5 needle, which is pretty small for a DK weight. And I think the pattern actually called for US 4. Uh, so I have made a bit of progress. You can see now that the body of the hat is extending uh, above the folded brim. And I am supposed to keep knitting until this measurement from the bottom of the fold up here is about seven inches and then start the decreases. So it's probably five, let's say five inches now. So just a little bit more to go. Again, this is just a one by one rib. It is not complicated at all. Um, but working at the tighter gauge is a little hard on my hands and uh, it gets a little boring, just the one by one rib, but it is a good mindless knit. So I've been very, it's been very easy to just, you know, put a few stitches here and there without having to keep track of a pattern. Uh, and I've been keeping it by the TV for my TV knitting. I still have, I believe, enough of the yarns to go ahead and uh, get that full size hat. Um, and I think <laughs> I explained poorly in the last episode that the, the reason behind the tight gauge is that the hat is intended to not be slouchy, but to be a little bit conical with a rounded top, kind of like a smurf hat <laughs> or maybe like a gnome hat, but not quite so pointy. Um, so I think again, maybe by the end of the month that could be done. Fingers crossed. Um, it is still, now that it's February, we are getting some warmer days mixed in with our cold days. So <laughs> last week there was a day where it was nearly 70 degrees. It was 65 degrees and sunny. It was beautiful. Uh, and then on Monday morning, we woke up to snow. Not like a lot, but um, snow nonetheless. So I expect there will still be enough cold days to make use out of both the sweater and the hat. Uh, so those are, I think, the two major non-design projects that I have been working on. Um, but like I said, I, I feel like I'm, I'm coming down with some starditis. I've been doing a lot of swatching because there's a lot of all of a sudden, I think finishing my tulip sweater, it was such a nice reminder of how wonderful it is to have to make your own clothes. And so now I'm, I want to make everything. So I have done some swatching. Uh, the first thing I have swatched for is the main knitting pattern from the capsule collection from Jacqueline C. Slack and Body. Uh, and this is, it's called Darren. And it actually has four iterations. You can make it as a T, a pullover, um, a vest, and a cardigan. Uh, so I am going to start by doing the t-shirt. It's, you know, this is kind of a, a real staple basic piece for your wardrobe. Um, but I think there's a lot of care that goes into this pattern. You can see when you, when you look in the book, how much effort has been put in to help people you know, get the right size and, and add bust starts if they need them and adjust the sleeves and, and things like that. Um, so I think given how much care went into creating the pattern, um, that even though it's sort of a, 
a real kind of basic piece, it's just going to be a real standout basic piece. It's going to be so well tailored um, and so well fitting. So I'm going to start with the t-shirt. Um, and the yarn I am using for that, here I'll show you my I'll show you my swatch first. I did swatch. Um, I was kind of uncertain whether I wanted to swatch flat or in the round because since it's sort of a, a cropped t-shirt, you really are kind of knitting just as much in the round as you are flat because um, you're doing you know the whole body down to the armholes is flat uh, and then you're in the round. So what I decided to do was to swatch flat. Uh, I'll make sure I take some some notes about what my my gauge is and then compare and probably will end up going up a needle size once things uh, are joined in the round because I like most knitters tend to knit more tightly working in the round. So here's my swatch and this is yarn that if you watch some of the old episodes, I was trying to do a test net of a shawl that just did not work. Um, and this is the yarn that I bought for that that I want to repurpose for this. So this is a lace weight yarn that I cannot remember the name of, but I will look it up and put it here, held together with Knit Picks Aloft. So if you can, if I hold it this way, you can see all that, that nice, fuzz and halo. And then I can show you the actual yarn. So this is the, the lace weight and you can see this is kind of a, a dusky pink. And then the aloft is a, a very pale gray. So I think they look beautiful together. The fabric is so soft. Uh, this is just going to be a wonderful layering piece. I'm really, especially with all of those new dresses that I'm sewing for myself, and I'm going to talk about a little bit more later in the podcast. So I did swatch for this. I need to go, I wrote it down. I need to go down a needle size, I think. Where did I write it? Okay, yes. Yeah, so the, the recommended needles are US 5. So I'm going to be working on a US 4 while it's flat and then up to a US five for the body in the round, I think. I haven't actually cast on, I'm trying not to because I got some other stuff going on. The other thing that I swatched for is the slanting slipover, which is a kind of vest, sweater vest. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a photo in here So this designer does not seem to have a very big presence on Ravelry. Uh, I've been following her on Instagram. I purchased the pattern directly from her website. I don't know how, um, how many people have seen her work. Presumably a lot of people in her native, I want to say Denmark, I think. Um, I don't know how, how popular she is elsewhere. She certainly has a big Instagram following, but like I said, she's not really on Ravelry. Um, so I don't know if a lot of people have seen this piece or any of her work before, but I did swatch for this. And this is, I have a ball here. So this is Durham Natura and this is their Gilead base, which is a worsted weight. And this colorway is Soge, so, so, my French is terrible, S-A-U-G-E, which presumably is sage, but you know, I guess it could be a false cognate. So you can see this is just a, um, a really pale green, kind of a gray green. Um, and my gauge, again, just like for the other one, was a little bit off and I think for this I have to go up a needle size. <laughs> now this is why you have to swatch because you know one designer I have to go down, another designer I have to go up. You just never know. You never know what the the knitting tension of the designer is. Uh, if they're a loose or a tight knitter or average. So make sure you swatch. 
Um, I said, I think I need to go up a needle size for this. Again, I have not cast on, um, but I am really looking forward to having this. I actually did not put this in my Make 9, but because it's not all Ravelry, I keep kind of forgetting about it. But I remember buying the yarn for it. I remember buying the yarn for it. Um, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I'm gonna, but it wasn't, it wasn't in my mind when I made my Make 9, but I am uh, still very committed to this and I already have the yarn for it. So starditis, it's a real thing, but I really love the stitch definition in this yarn. Uh, I haven't used Gilead before. I'm sorry, there's a bird outside in the tree that's just distracting me. Uh, I have not used Gilead before, or is it Gilead? I think it's Gilead. Um, but I have used the Ulysse, which I used for my tulip slash offering of trees pullover, and I was really happy with that. And this is basically the same kind of structure to the yarn, but a heavier weight. So it's... Um, slightly rustic you know it's not super smooth um, but it still has this really great stitch definition it's not it's not you know as soft as some other merinos I think it is merino yeah okay so it says lan merino carde so that means presumably carded merino wool um, so presumably there's some kind of, they spin the yarn a bit differently than other. I, my French is, I did take French, um, in university for three years, I want to say. So kind of a basic understanding, but not enough to really tell you about, um, in depth what that says. But I think the production of it is a little bit different than a traditional the way that uh, yarns are traditionally spun. So it is just, it's not, it feels a little bit like a woolen spun because it is a little bit lofty and airy, but I don't think it actually is woolen spun. I'm sure you can go look it up. Maybe I'll go look it up, but not right now. So I also swatched for that. Um, and I have also swatched for a test, no, a design that I'm gonna be working on We'll go ahead and talk about that uh, in a later segment. So that's all I have for on and off the needles in this episode. All right, so this past weekend, I actually got to go out. Uh, and like I said, we it, we had some warm weather and it was, I want to say, in the, in the 50s, maybe low 60s on Fahrenheit uh, on Saturday. Uh, so I went up to Frederick to have lunch with my sister and while I was there I did a little bit of yarn shopping so I actually have some stash flash. Uh, I actually visited two different places so I visited uh, Magpie Market which is Damie of Magpie Fibers. Uh, I don't know what to call it. It's a I mean, shop but they have like a few different kinds of crafty things. They've got like calligraphy pens and they've got like needle punch stuff and embroidery but they also sell cards and journals and there were a bunch of tarot decks it's quite a mix of things um and then for yarn so that was the first place i stopped uh, and i was looking for yarn for a test knit that i'm going to do for karina spencer for her mid-season sweater and i'm going to pop a photo of that in here um really love this and love her patterns and love her as a person. So I'm really excited for this test knit and I did find yarn. Um, it is already wound up. Uh, so the pattern calls for a sport, but she said most um, sort of heavier fingering weight yarns would also work. So I was a little torn between whether I wanted to try out the nest sport or if I wanted to go ahead with the sock yarn. Um, but ultimately, I thought that the nest sport might just be a little bit too rustic for this pattern because of these very um, sharp structural lines that you see in there. So I went with her swanky sock and this colorway is called Wicked Game. I'm almost positive. Uh, this colorway is called Wicked Game and it is just this really beautiful kind of dusky purple pink 
and I've bought this several times on several of her bases because I just love it. It has so much depth, it has a little bit of shine. The uh, Swanky Sock is a Merino Cashmere Nylon. I am just, I love this color so much. Um, so you can, like from back here, it really looks like kind of a deep purple. When you get closer, you can really see kind of a pink, even a little brown kind of shining through. I love it. So I grabbed two skeins of this, skeins of this, for that test knit. I still need to swatch. I just wanted to show you guys, because there are so many different stitch patterns in this pattern, uh, Karina actually gives guidance on swatching and then gives you instructions to make this particular swatch and tells you what it should measure so that you are making sure you got the gauge for all of your stitch patterns. I think that's very clever. Um, but it also is a bit more involved than a regular swatch. So I haven't quite done it yet. Also because I need to start with my, the US-5 and my US-5s are, I mean, I have like several of them, but I don't, I don't know where they are. They're involved in other projects. So I haven't swatched yet, but that is coming up. And that is the primary reason I haven't actually cast on any of those other things that I swatched for because I was, um, I had applied for this test knit and I decided to wait and see if I was going to be able to do the test knit or not before I started casting on something else. So I got that. Uh, and then I went over to the Knot House, which is also in Frederick and is owned uh, by Kathy and Heather, who are just wonderful ladies. If you are not uh, following them on Instagram or checking out their podcast on YouTube, you should definitely do that. Uh, and actually Kathy was there, so I got to chat with her for a little bit and I did just a little bit of yarn shopping. So the first thing I picked up, um, I was originally going to use leftovers for um, one of the patterns on my Make Nine, which is the Layla Bralette. The more I thought about it, the more I thought, I know I have lots of DK weight leftovers, but I didn't have any yarn that was not too variegated, or I couldn't find really any that I had enough of that wasn't too variegated. So I decided to grab a new yarn <laughs> to make that. Um, so this is actually their in-house yarn that Heather dyes herself, which I'm dropping. <laughs> uh, so the base is called La Di Da DK. And this colorway is called Smoke and Mirrors. So this is 100% superwash Reno, which of course is nice and soft, and that's what you want in something that is gonna be right next to your boobs. Um, let's see, it has 274 yards, so plenty. And I figured this, this colorway has enough kind of depth to, to give it a nice, you know, a unique look, but not so much that it's gonna interfere with the stitch patterns, which is really what I wanted, so. Just kind of a speckly black and gray. Nice. Uh, neutral as well. Not that it matters because I'm not, it's not like I'm going to be wearing a bralette on the outside of my clothes, but still. Uh, so that was the first thing I picked up. Then I saw that they had some of the uh, Biche et Bouche Le Gros Lambs Wool. Le Gros Lambs Wool. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have used Le Petit Lamb's Wool for the Six Crooked Highways uh, sweater design that I did a couple of years ago, but I haven't tried their uh, the heavier weight version. So the Le Petit Lamb's Wool is like a fingering weight, and this is probably, I would assume, an, an Aran, an Aran Wool, maybe more still, let's see. 100 grams, 210 yards, yeah, it says Aran. Um, so I decided to grab a skein of this, not for anything, or pink or ball, whatever, not for anything in particular. Um, I just really like this color. It just so beautiful. I'm a sucker for a good blue. Um, but you know, both of my kids need new hats and, and I know my husband still wants a pair of fingerless mitts and you know, so there's lots of small accessories that I have on my sort of two knit list. And certainly this is going to work for at least one of them. So it's a good 200 yards. The colorway is the dark blue turquoise. Really beautiful. Um, their yarn is, um, again, a little bit rustic. 
it is wool and spun, I believe. Yeah, wool and spun. Um, but it's also this lamb's wool, which is the uh, the first shearing of the babies, uh, is what you get when you get lamb's wool. So um, even though it is not merino, I don't think. It just says lamb's wool, but it doesn't say what kind. Um, it's still pretty soft and it's nice and warm as well. So that was the second scheme. <laughs> and then I picked up something that's not yarn, but we're gonna put in this segment anyway, that I have been dying to try. So these are the TKB, which is the Knitting Barber Try-On Cords. Um, I really hate, you know, when I want to try on sweaters, having to, you know, take my yarn needle and put them onto scrap yarn and then slide them all back on. So these, and I got the fuchsia because I figured it would stand out against most um, colors because this is not a color I normally knit with. So what you do with these is you, let's see if I can find, do I have a knitting needle here? I'll just use this. <laughs> so you it have a little, can you see this? No, but they're open at the end like a big flexible straw so you just slip them over the needle tip and then you can just slide everything onto them and then do the same thing when you're done uh, and it does include two different lengths uh, I don't know this one's what does that look like a couple of feet two and a half feet maybe and then this one is longer. Um, so I have been trying, dying to try these out. And I actually had gone online maybe last week and looked around for them. Um, but, you know, didn't pull the trigger because I you know, didn't need to put an order in anywhere. But then since I was out, um, and I saw that Kathy had them at the Knot House, I finally got some. So I'm really looking forward to a much easier way to be able to try on in-progress garments. Uh, and these come in a bunch of different colors. Like I said, I got a fuchsia because I figure it's going to contrast with most yarns that I uh, would be using. All right, so no. just to... I am doing my podcast. Uh, two 30 inch, so I'm probably two and a half feet, and one 60 inch cord. So that was the only thing I picked up. I'm very excited to be able to use them. So maybe in the next, um, maybe in the next episode, I'll be able to do a demonstration of them if I have any projects that are ready to be tried on. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So that is uh, what I have for Stash Flash in this episode. All right, I have a pattern debut and an almost pattern debut for you uh, in this Adelante segment. The first is that I have a new pattern in the latest collection from Knit Fix. Let me go ahead and pop a photo in here. This is the Cassera Tea, which is part of their new Breezy collection, which is full of cotton knits. Um, it has been quite a while <laughs> since I worked on this. I think the pattern was due back in July. Um, but I can show you what I created um, when I was drafting the pattern. So Knit Picks will knit their own sample. So you just kind of have to you can knit as much or as little as you want, but whatever you need to get the pattern done. So I was able to draft the pattern after doing approximately this much. Um, but I did put it on a holder because I would like one of these for myself. So this is a saddle shoulder tee. So this is the first thing that you knit. You knit two of these. They have a little pico bind off on the edge. So you knit two of these. Then you're going to pick up the back, geez, back and front separately. So you're going to pick up along here, 
cast on for the back neck. This is the back. And then you're going to pick up on the opposite side on the other saddle. Then you're going to work the back down from there to the armhole. And this does have some short rows, which help the, the shoulder to sort of drape nicely. And I use German short rows for this, which I love because you can barely see them. They're just almost invisible. Uh, and then it also has a little bit of a, you can see this kind of slip stitch at the edge. So there is no armhole trim to pick up when you are done. It is just, it, the armhole is already finished. It has a slip stitch, it's getting worn out, but it's a slip stitch edge um, that looks neat and tidy. No extra finishing there. You will pick up around the neckline and then do a little bit of a decorative bind off to create sort of, again, little kind of pico looking dots all around the neck, but that's it, not around the armhole. So you're gonna knit down to the armholes then you're going to do the same thing for the front, pick up along here, cast on for a neck, pick up along the other side, knit down to the armhole, join in the round, and then just work in straight stockinette until you're getting close to as long as you want it to be. And then you're going to split. It has a small split hem, and the hem is also curved with some short rows. So as I said, this is part of their new Breezy collection, uh, and you can purchase either the individual pattern or the entire ebook from them. It will be a print book, but the I don't think the print edition is available yet. Um, so I will include links in the description box down below. The yarn I use for this is their wool cotton. I think it's only available in a bear. I don't think they dye it, or at least they don't yet. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but when I uh, was contractor for the pattern. They only had it in a bear. Um, I had originally proposed working this in their alpaca cotton blend, but I think they've discontinued that. So this is a wool cotton blend. So it is, um, you get sort of the, the, not the structure from the cotton, but you also get a little extra warmth from the wool. Um, it doesn't feel super woolly and I don't remember anymore what the, <laughs> the blend is. I don't know if it's 50, 50 or not. Uh, but I think this would work. This would work easily um, in a pure cotton as well, or maybe a cotton linen blend. I believe it's a DK weight. I should have looked some of this up before I started talking. Um, again, the links are down there, so you can find out more information. I, I think it is a DK weight. Um, so I think a, a cotton or a cotton linen blend or something like that would also work. I don't know about 100% wool. Um, I think 100% DK weight wool might not have sort of the, the drape and, and ease and comfortable kind of lounge around tea. Um, I don't know. I just don't see it quite working, but you know, everybody knits their projects the way that they like, so maybe it would work for you. But for me, I think um, a wool cotton or or other plant fibers are good for this one. Um, so again, that is from Knit Picks in their new breezy collection. It's something, it's like breezy, comfy cotton knits or something like that, that I should know. Let me put it right here. Um, available on their website, individual pattern or ebook. And lastly, I have an almost pattern drop for you, which is that I have opened pre-orders for the Zitza shawl, which you might recall is this worsted weight brioche shawl. Uh, so this pattern is officially going to be released on February 28th, but you can pre-order it now at a special pre-order price. Um, and then if you do that, you will automatically have the pattern delivered either to your Ravelry library or your inbox, depending on whether you order on Ravelry or pay him. Uh, so in case you've missed it, this is a three color brioche shawl. This smaller sample is worked in Brooklyn Tweed tones and shelter. The larger sample, which I will throw a photo of in here, 
is Horton Knit Picks High Desert Worsted. Uh, both of them use three colors and the instructions for either size, I, I'm giving you the size, or I will be giving you the sizes in the pattern, but the sizes are really just a guideline because the instructions for either size are knit until you run out of yarn or knit until you have used three quarters of your yarn and then switch colors. So you can basically make this as big or small as you want. So this smaller one that takes, again, um, for both versions, I basically knit until I ran out of yarn. Uh, so this uses the full three skeins of the Brooklyn Tweed, um, Tones and Shelter, which are both 140 yards per skein. And this is how big it is. And then the other one is quite large. Um, and that is the one that I gifted to my dad for Christmas and referred to as a triangle scarf and not a shawl. Um, and that is sort of a, a really big cozy wrap. And again, that uses the full of each, the full skein of the High Desert Worsted, which is 270 yards, I think, per skein. So that's 600 and whatever that is, 635 yards or something. Uh, and this one is 420 yards total. So it is two color brioche all the way through here, just switching up the colors occasionally. Um, the last section is a half fisherman's rib. The edges are done, I got a little yarn tail peeking out. The edges are done in kind of a slip stitch I-cord, which looks really neat and tidy from either side, which is what I was going for. I wanted this to be really reversible. And then it just finishes up with this, it's hard, it's hard to tell, it's almost a Pico bind out. Like you're getting just a little, a little hint of a kind of Pico there, but it's not. Um, this, if you are new, to brioche or wanting to try brioche, this is actually a great first project, I think, because you only need to know one increase and it's a really simple one. It's just uh, basically I knit one yarn over and knit one into the same stitch. Um, that's pretty simple. Uh, brioche decreases. Mohair in my eye, lashes. Um, brioche decreases can be tricky, but the increases are relatively straightforward. Uh, and you are working outward from one point here. So again, that is now available for pre-order. I will include the links in the description box down below. When you pre-order it, you just have to have something to give you as a download. So you get a download that has the specs. So you know, if you want to, you can take it out, uh, print it out, take it to the yarn shop to buy your yarn or whatever. Um, that is what you will get when you pre-order and then when the pattern is officially released on the 28th, you get the whole pattern delivered directly to you. I have been making steady progress on the sweater design that I am working on in uh, Kim Dye's yarn, Falkland Wool. This is my long lost sweater pattern. You can see it's really starting to take shape now. Um, I did, this is gonna have sort of a, a slight A-line so I did do, I think, the first decrease. Let's see, I did that about an inch and a half back. And I'm working the decreases every four inches, more or less. Um, I'm kind of just, I will at some point do the math for all the sizes to know when you have to do the decreases. But at this point, I'm just basically needing a sample for me to wear and model. And so um, I know that I want the body of the sweater to be about 12 inches and I'm doing three decrease rounds, so 12 divided by three. Um, so I am happy with how this is working up. I love the color. You can see you're getting a little bit of kind of striping in the stockinette, but that is much less obvious in the other parts. Um, so this is, at this point, I have memorized the pattern and I am able to just stitch on this. Um, without too much care, just checking occasionally to make sure I'm at the right spot on the slip stitch. The cable is really simple and the cable crosses are worked every other round. So very straightforward. Um, I think I have almost settled on making this a drop shoulder. Um, 
not 100%, but I, I still think that's the way I'm going to go with this. But we shall see. Um, as I said, this is a pattern that I had originally designed for um, another yarn dyer for a collection that just never came together. And so it was originally a set in sleeve um, that original iteration of the pattern only had six sizes. Um, and if I wanted to make it a set in sleeve, now I would have to do all the math for four more sizes at least. Plus I am not super, I'm, I, now that I got a handle on the method of creating a set in, a seamless set in sleeve, um, I really much prefer that, which means I would basically just have to scrap all of the math that I already did for the set and sleeve and redo it. Um, and given kind of like the look that I want for the sweater being very casual and kind of swingy, a set and sleeve is really, I don't think necessary. I think a drop shoulder is going to work much better. So it's on the way and it is working up. There was, and it is working up um, as expected. So that is still underway. Maybe it'll be ready in March. Uh, and then the other thing I did, <laughs> um, so I mentioned a couple of times that I was planning to kind of reimagine my sound side pullover as a cardigan. And I bought yarn for that a while back. So the yarn I bought from Corit is Amano Yarns and it's their uh, Chesky. So this is a wool cotton linen. So 60% wool, 30% cotton, 10% linen. Uh, and then their Uma, which is a Surrey, Surrey Kid Mohair Silk Lace Weight. So the original sound side pullover is also a, a fingering with a Lace Weight. Um, this actually is not fingering though. It is, it's either a very heavy fingering or a sport, depending on how you look at things. So, um, my original plan was to use all of the uh, math I had done for the sound side pullover and create the cardigan. So my first step was swatching. Since the pullover is knit in the round, um, which means I would be knitting tighter, um, for swatching flat, I went, so it was, it's originally, it's knit in the round on a US-5. If I am, well, if I am knitting flat, my gauge is going to be looser. Um, so I decided to swatch on a US-4 and uh, it's not right. I would have to go down another needle size. Um, and I already think this fabric is too stiff. I want this to kind of be a, um, so the reason I wanted the cotton blend, not 100% wool, is I want this to be the kind of quick cardigan to throw on, you know, in the summer when the air conditioning is just too cold or you have to go to the grocery store and you have to go in the freezer aisle and it's just too cold. Um, so I wanted this to be a light, drapey, airy, cardigan um, that is not, you know, 100% wool. So I, this fabric is just too thick. So I can't get gauge unless I go down another needle size, which I don't want to do, which means I have to work at a different gauge, which means I have to redo all of the math. I'm not going to be able to use any of the math from the original. So I seem to have created a lot more work for myself. Um, I don't want to switch yarns. I already bought the yarn. I'm happy with the yarn. I, I like how the two colors are working together to create this slightly marled purple. Um, I like using Amano yarns. They are based in Peru. Um, they have so many different beautiful bases and, and um, colorways and things. I don't, I don't want to switch yarn. So yeah, I, I'm going to have to do a lot more work than I thought to, to make the sound side cardigan a reality. Um, so that is kind of on the back burner. Like I said, I really want this to be not necessarily a cold weather sweater, but a, 
a sweater for when things are cold, but you know, like not permanently cold. So again, you know, it's, it's the summer and the air conditioning is too cold or it's, it's just starting to be fall. So it's chilly in the morning, but not in the afternoon. And I just want it to be something easy to throw on and take off. Um, so I wouldn't be publishing it probably until the summertime anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna set that aside. I did actually start reworking some of the math. Um, then I remember that I wanted to add pockets and, um, that's a whole thing. So we'll put that aside for now. Um, so that is what I've been working on in terms of designing, even though I'm tired. All right. I hope uh, everybody is doing well and making their way through February. Um, January is my least favorite month. February is not great, but um, at least it's short and there's um, chocolate for Valentine's Day. So I, I definitely give it a leg up on January. Um, weather, as I said earlier, is still mostly cold here, but with some warming spots. Um, kids are still in school and um, for the early, I guess most of January, every week there would be, there were certain criteria that were, that had to be met in order for a school to have to go virtual. Usually it was for like 14 days um, just to give, give the virus a chance to settle down. Um, and that has stopped. So none of the schools in the area are virtual. We do still have a mask mandate in school, which I hope they maintain. Um, I really don't understand a lot of the complaining about masks. You know, I don't like wearing masks either, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, if you have under, understandably, there are kids who may have, you know, kids with autism and, and other, um, disabilities that may struggle with wearing a mask that I understand, but in general, um, masks are just not that big of a deal. And because, you know, the virus is still out there spreading and because we can't get young children vaccinated and because, you know, we still should be concerned about, um, people who are immunocompromised and, and people who for various reasons cannot be vaccinated. I don't really understand the rush to get rid of mask mandates. So, um, I did go to JJ's school on Valentine's Day for his class party. And um, we, it was, I guess, two parents who were there. Um, and the teacher asked one of us to plan a craft and the other one to plan a game. So I planned a craft. And of course I planned something related to yarn. Um, we made these little yarn heart decorations. Um, try to put a photo in here for you. So I just, I had to plan a craft. I was like, well, I have lots of yarn, so it should be something with yarn. Um, and uh, I found, you know, this idea online that's basically you just take these cardboard hearts and wrap yarn around them. It is not <laughs> super complicated. Uh, so that is what we did. I took all of the red and pink and purple yarns that I could learn eh, leftovers, not, not brand new skeins. That would be crazy. Um, I took as many of them as I could find. I spent all of Valentine's Day morning and part of the afternoon uh, with a flattened Amazon box, an X-Acto knife, and a heart-shaped cookie cutter as a stencil drawing and cutting out these cardboard hearts. Um, you know, Valentine's Day just is not what it used to be. Uh, but the kids seemed to have fun and, and uh, it certainly kept them busy for a while. Um, and some kids, uh, it was interesting, you know, mostly girls would really kind of put effort into making a nice, a nice looking heart. And uh, so I definitely got to see a few particularly nice 
cards that turned out well. <laughs> Most of them did not, but you know, it kept them busy and happy and um, it was a nice, it's always, you know, I, um, my mom didn't really do stuff like that when I was growing up and of course my dad was working. So after spending a morning cutting out cardboard hearts, I was like, oh, this is why she didn't do this stuff. Uh, but it was nice to be in his classroom and, and um, let's see the kids and, and uh, just to be part of that. So uh, that was our big Valentine's Day, um, Valentine's evening. Somehow I got stuck making my own Valentine's Day dinner. I don't know how that happened. Um, I made, I, I really, for, I really don't know why, but the, the Chrissy Teigen cookbooks really speak to my heart for whatever reason. So I think last Christmas, I mean, 2020, I got two of them, the first two, and then this Christmas I got her third one. Uh, so I made all recipes from her third cookbook and it was a, um, a cod, I think it's called date night cod. It was a cod and a, uh, white wine, tomato broth kind of delicious. Um, and then to go with it, scalloped potatoes, meaning twice baked potatoes that actually had scallops mixed in. Uh, and then her, um, pull apart garlic Parmesan rolls, which I've actually made before and are fantastic. So and that was my delicious Valentine's Day dinner. Uh, and uh, that is about all that's been going on around here. Um, my husband went to a friend's house to watch the Super Bowl. I watched until the halftime show was over and then just, uh, in general, I'm not interested in football. I did not care about uh, either team and the commercials weren't really speaking to me this year either, so. Uh, it was peaceful, you know, he was out, the kids were asleep, so I just watched some Outlander. <laughs> uh, I am trying to rewatch all of the Outlanders before season six starts next month, so I just finished rewatching season three. I'm also trying to read the sixth book before the sixth season starts, um, but boy is it long, so that may or may not actually happen. Other than that, it is the same old, same old around here. Um, we are still somewhat limited and, and um, I don't really feel like we're, it's a major imposition. You know, we don't, we're not super socially active people anyway. Um, so we're still staying home for the most part, but that is not that unusual for us, particularly this time of year. Um, we are going out kids, you know, to a friend's or a family. And um, I think when I went out to lunch with my sister this past Saturday, it was the first time I'd been in a restaurant in a while. Um, but since it was lunchtime and it wasn't going to be super crowded, um, I was pretty comfortable with that. And of course, while I was out shopping, uh, even though Frederick has, has dropped their mask mandate, I was happy to wear my mask. Um, it was, when we sat down for lunch, the waitress was wearing a mask and then like halfway through our eating, she just stopped wearing it. And she was like, well, you know, I, I know they, uh, they got rid of the mask mandate and, you know, it was kind of hot. So, <laughs> okay, I guess. <laughs> Is being hot a reason to expose people to disease? I don't know. I, uh, I refrained from commenting. Um, we went to a place that has crab poutine. I'm sure I've talked about the crab poutine before. It is so good. And it was as wonderful as ever. And I was very happy to have it. Um, I should find a recipe for that. I wonder if it exists. Not that I don't like going out, but uh, I'm sure it's something I could make at home. But it was delicious. Is basically French fries with kind of like a sauce that is really kind of cream of crab soup, and then lump crab on top and cheese curds so, and green onions. So that was delicious, uh, and that is pretty much the most excitement that has been going on around here. Um, and that's okay with me. Just uh, 
staying home with my knitting and uh, I am okay with that. But I did hear that Maryland Sheep and Wool is going to happen this year in person. I can't wait. Um, I am ready. I don't know anything about what mask or vaccine requirements they may have in place. I hope they have some. Um, it is, you know, obviously shopping is in the barns, but it is you know, an outdoor area. Um, and I feel like it has been forever since I saw knitting people and I pet sheep. So I am really looking forward to that. Thank you all so much for joining me for episode 54 of the Illinois Stitch Podcast. Mm -hmm.